get started. Um, and I'll say welcome to the March 18th, 2014 meeting of the Northampton Transportation and Parking uh, Commission. Um, are we audio and video recording? We are, so I'll announce that we are audio and video recording today. And um, it seems as if there is a quorum present. Uh, so I will call the meeting uh, to order. And um, I'd like to, if it's okay with everyone, take a few of these items in a different order than they are on the agenda today. Um, I thought maybe we could start with any public comment, if there's anyone uh, who's not specifically on the agenda. And it, I don't know if there's any public comments to like No, to I'm on the agenda. So. You're on the agenda? Yes. Oh, you're here for, for the chamber. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't seem like there's any other public comment unless Mr. Lepiansky, are you no. here to say anything? Do you listen? Okay. Um, so it doesn't seem like there's any public comment. Um, so let's move along to um, approval of the minutes for February 18th, 2014. Motion to approve. Okay. Um, any discussion of the minutes? I have I have two items to, to change. Um, they're very minor, so I'm looking them over. Um, the first is as honored as I would have been to nominate Councillor Klein for Vice President of Sanction, Mr. Cooper did it. Um, so that is one change. And that is under Mary, Mary can find out where that is. And the second change. Second change is, uh, I think it was item 14 when we voted on the amendment uh, to the ordinance. Um, it actually did not pass unanimously. It, uh, Chief Sinker was voted no. So I think that makes it 10, yes, no. So if we could make those two changes, please. And uh, any other discussions or corrections? Okay, so all in favor of the minutes? Um, and Mary, just what you want me to start saying? Um, who, who, who made the motion? Who said? Sure. Okay. So, okay. So I'm going to get in the habit of, of saying who first and second is in the back. So Mr. Pomerantz made the motion, and Councilor Klein seconded. Did you second the approval? Yes. Okay. And then it was unanimous. Okay, thank you. So that's done. Um, now let's see. I, this is um, where I'd like to move up some of the items because we have guests, special guests today. Um, before I do that, I see some people have come in um, after we started. And, I, and so I'd like to reopen public comment if there's anyone here to make any statement. I see Mr. Newton in the audience. Um, so you're welcome to come up. Here. Yeah, whenever you're whenever you're ready, I just walk in um, and address the commission. Sorry, out of breath. Please excuse me. But take your time. In fact, we might just take it. Yeah, no. Uh, Mr. Lopo just suggested that we uh, wait. We, you can stay there. We'll stay whatever you want. But okay. um, I think we'll go around and just introduce ourselves really quickly. You, you can start. Hi, I'm James Lowenthal. I'm a citizen. <laughs> I'll move we'll like a transportation engineer. Uh, Devin Bruce from the planning board. Gary Hartwell, board of public works. Uh, Bill Hargrave, board of health. Mary Madera Clark. Ned Huntley, director of public works. Dave Pomeranz, director of central services. Richard Cooper, citizen. Alisa Klein, board of the city councilor. Um, Brian O'Donnell, board three, city council. And coming in. We find the planning director. Okay, thank you. Um, so if anyone has public comment, Mr. Newton, would you like to, to start? I guess the rule in city council is we, we stick to three minutes. I don't think we have to be as strict. As I, I will be brief. My name is David Newton. I live at 2 out of North Street. Um, the, there is a meeting that's been called for the 25th yeah. for residents of North Street who have um, some, some things they've observed since North Street has been beautifully 
retrofitted, and uh, it's for the most part it is a huge success. I think on overwhelmingly uh, the vote is on the street that things are greatly improved, but there are some issues, um, and that meeting is 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 going to be called so that people can express some thoughts about and observations about things, the dynamic of the street since the street has been improved. And I thought I'd just come here today for a moment because one of those issues is going to be parking. And uh, the parking dynamic, if I can use that word, on the street is kind of a, a delicate balance. And uh, I think most of the people who went to the initial meetings before the road project began understand uh, the, uh, the DPW's position on why they thought it would be a good idea from an engineering standpoint to have parking allowed in certain places on the street, the full length of the street. Um, th those cars at different times of day and night present traffic calming uh, result, which was uh, the positive part, I think, of the D, uh, DPW's position on, on why it's a good idea to have some cars parked there. But I think people will be discussing their observations about some of the negative aspects that have cropped up about having cars parked on what is now a consistently narrower width, the full length of the street. And so when you have cars parked, especially oversized cars parked uh, uh, on the right-hand side, which is where most of them park. They take up more than two-thirds of the width of the lane, so they stop and go on that lane. Um, and that, but that presents a whole set of dynamics. The, the one thing that I'll just mention for the DPW to consider, and, and parking people to consider, is that the the late night hours and the light traffic hours on weekends and late at night are when we have serious speeding problems on what is really a thoroughfare like Con Street. Um, a lot of people have asked, why does Con Street have no parking whatsoever and have, have similar kind of configuration as a thoroughfare into the city? And North Street, which has now become much more of a thoroughfare into the city because of the facility of the new street. Why do we allow parking on, on uh, in places on, on North Street? So, uh, it, it just by way of saying that whomever might be invited to come, or anybody from the Parking Commission, uh, that could come to that meeting and maybe just hear people's thoughts, because there will be thoughts expressed about the, 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 the issue of uh, presence of cars on the street. Um, the, it, it does, the, the, a lot of people have observed that the reverse seems to be the case, that when the, the traffic is light at night and on weekends, that's when speeding is the biggest problem, and there seem to be the least amount of cars parked at those times mainly because, um, well, because it's the weekend and late at night, um, and the out-of-area out of, out of cars are gone, and that's when people go 60 miles an hour in a 30 and 20 mile an hour zone. So just, just things to consider about the parking issue there, and I would encourage anybody uh, that would be interested to come to the 25th meeting to kind of hear words from the people on the street. Thank you. David, where and when is it? David, where and when is it? It's the 20, 25th? Yeah, it's a Tuesday, Tuesday, on Tuesday, um, March 25th, 5.30 to 7.30, the second floor, um, City Hall. This is a meeting that, um, that I've put together for Ward 3 residents um, in the North Street area to talk about some of the issues yeah, that did sure. on this meeting. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, is there any other public comment today? Okay. Um, well, great. Uh, I
think we should move on then to the next item, which is um, a request from the Greater Northampton Chamber of Commerce to use Strong Avenue, Strong Avenue parking lot. And um, Ms. Beck is here. So my name is Suzanne Beck. I'm the Executive Director of the Greater Northampton Chamber of Commerce, the for the applicant for this permit today. I just want to give you a little bit of background and then jump right into uh, what we're asking for. The Chamber um, holds one fundraising event a year. It's our annual auction. And we've been doing that at the Clarion. This is actually our 21st year. We've done in the last 10 years at the Clarion Hotel. And of course, you're all aware that that building is, going, is scheduled to be demolished in some time in the next 18 months or so. Um, the event is always held either the last Friday in April or the first Friday in May. And so we're changing our venue this year um, to the east, to a, having a party, private party at the East Side Grill. And because of the number of people that attend the auction, we're looking for permission to have uh, to take the parking lot on Strong Avenue for um, Friday, May 2nd, and returning it back to the city noon on uh, Saturday, May 3rd, uh, so that we can put up a tent um, to accommodate additional guests to the auction. So the event takes place within the East Side Grill and um, under the tent. We're very fortunate. Deb Flynn, who is the owner of the East Side Grill, is here if any questions come up. And my manager of operations, Kristen Cole, is also here. She's in, in charge of all the logistics as well as a lot of other things. Um, the plan is to put, as I said, we've measured the one half of the parking lot. It measures about 48 feet by 88 feet. So the plan is to put a 40 by 80 tent in that parking lot. We're um, going to be contracting for valet parking services for that night so that our, the guests coming to the auction that are um, you know, looking for parking or, or wanting to take advantage of that kind of parking, that will be available to guests so that we can move cars um, out of the downtown area or into um, private parking areas. We're, uh, the event hours are 6.30, um, did I tell you 6.30? I told you 6. 6 o'clock, we're kind of still figuring that out, but 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock that evening, 10 o'clock is when the East Side Grill uh, typically closes as a restaurant on a Friday night. We've been in touch with um, Captain Clayton at the police department, notifying her of our plans, and she is uh, interested in meeting with us after, after our meeting with the Northampton License Commission about the uh, liquor license procedure. We've also been in touch with Captain Theron from the, the uh, fire department. Um, and we responded with some, you know, points about use of the tent and et cetera, et cetera, but nothing in particular related um, to parking. And I think that gives you a sketch. Uh, I'm happy to answer questions, but I'm sure I left things out. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? You said it was a private event. Can people attend? Yes. They would buy a ticket that night if they hadn't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just for the commissioners, um, Central Services oversees the parking lots and their maintenance throughout the city, and we fairly regularly get requests to close off lots for short-term periods. Um, uh, bicycle race sign-ins, uh, the poker run, things like that. Um, because this request was for a longer period of time, when, when the chamber notified us of the request, I suggested they come before the TPC. Uh, we can certainly, through the Parking Maintenance Division, handle closing the lot off sufficiently, uh, but I suggested that they should come before the TPC because of the length of the request for this particular one. So I just wanted to put a little background information. Thank, Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yeah. Any of the hours? Oh, of the event go from when to when? The event from 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock p.m. We would be taking the parking lot at the beat. We have to figure that out, but sometime before anybody parked there on Friday so that the tent could be constructed. And then ending your use of the lot when? By noon on Saturday. And that's a clean up of it. Yeah, just to they'll actually take the tent down Saturday morning. Okay. Just the whole lot. Yeah, there's no way to get cars into the other side, so, yeah. Are there any other known major events, venues open that night that might be pressed for parking needs? 
Just curious. Yeah. Um, did we check like the class Calvin or anything like that? We we are checking that. We haven't seen anything that's popped up yet. Yeah. Is um, I know you had a question, Councilor Klein, but is, is the Pride Parade on the third? It's the third? next thing. I will say that the East Side Grill generally has 360 guests on a Friday night, and we expect to have 250. Do we have a sense, um, David, do you know how many parking spaces there are in that lot that will not be in use no. because of the event? Yeah, not, not right off the top of my head. It's one of the larger lots. And I'm also curious about the valet parking that you're talking about for people coming to the event. Where are you planning on funneling those? Uh, I mean, first we're using up this whole parking lot, but then we're going to have an influx of many, many guests, it sounds like. Um, where will they be we, valeted to? We have very good relationships with the auto dealers on King Street, so we're hoping to use the old Honda lot for those cars. And then bus folks in, or just have them walk over? They would <coughs> get back somehow. We were working out the details. They'd have to get themselves back, not the guests. Because they would drop off at, at the event, and then the car would go, and, and, and they would come back. Any other questions? Yeah, I'm just a comment. The, so, the sooner on Saturday, the 10th was not there, probably the, the better. better. We'll open as soon as we can. And the question, do you have outside music? Is there is there any noise issue to be considered? Um, we're going to have a, a I think it's four. Four-piece jazz band under the tent. <coughs> so there's some residential across the street, second floor. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. That's, that would be my own opinion. There used to be a lot going on downtown, I'm sure. And we'll be done by 10. So. I guess I'm uh, curious just about the length we're talking about, um, longer than 24 hours. And uh, Mr. Pomerantz commented that uh, other events that have put up tents and used parking lots haven't taken that that long a chunk of time, and I'm wondering if there is any way to um, at least do it earlier in the morning on Saturday, take it down so that shoppers coming on Saturday morning can use that lot, um, if there's a way to start the setup later. Um, and maybe Mr. Pomerantz has some ideas about how it can be done quicker because it's been done by other groups. Sure, because that's I mean, a long period of time. I guess the concern is that once once somebody gets into the lot on Friday, there's no way to get them out if the, the tent shows up. But we can certainly think about alternatives to create access maybe to some of the lot. Because the event's over by 10 or so on yeah. Friday night, and there's nothing going on Saturday morning. No, except taking down the tent. Well, if that's the case, then we could certainly open that lot up by 6 o'clock or so, and uh, that would be doable. But oh, that's true, because you could come tent. in and go back and kind of, that's true. Right. Could you get, who's the 10 beams? Northampton Rentals? At this point, our, our plan is to rent it from Northampton Rentals. So could they come in at 6 and take the tent down? But we haven't asked them. Okay. Well, we could certainly open the lot. Yeah, that's the true. The tent would be the issue. That's true. And we would expect people to leave fairly early on that Saturday. Are we Clarification that there's going to be cars there Saturday morning. No, there's not going to be cars. It's just the tents. It's my just, just the tents. Tent. Tent. Oh, that's right. That's the reason yeah, we're so doing right. this. Okay. Right. So if we did that fairly early, we could accommodate any visitors for the bike way. It's my understanding that the staging, kind of the, the gathering for the pride parade, begins about 10 o'clock in the morning. That's and right. that's a a lot of the, the large number of spots that we won't have for folks coming in if um, we don't reopen the parking lot till 12. And that's kind of a prime place for folks to park that are participating in the Pride March. The organizer of the parade was here earlier and um, made the comment, she thought that we were having the event on the same day as the Pride Parade and said that she didn't see any logistical conflicts with that plan. So, so one of the concerns for this commission is so it's a um, inconvenience for other other parkers perhaps uh, loss of revenue for the lot um, and whatever times involved for for your department to to block it off and signage and whatever right um, and um, 
and there is a precedent for doing them. We've done this for other other events, maybe not not as long or as as big of a lot. Well, we certainly have done it for the um, the Taste of Northampton and, and, and the like that. And the jazz. Jazz fest. Jazz fest. Yeah. Much more true. Um, and as you said, you know, I think that the that the east side tends to use up that entire lot anyway on a Friday night. So, you know, um, yeah, I don't really see how it's a is a great impact on us, and I think that the that the chamber does so much for the community anyway. That, um, you know, so we don't know. Okay. Further discussion? Anything else you'd like to say? Mm -hmm. Appreciate the opportunity. Of course. Um, what are we looking for here in uh, motion to endorse the project? Or? I think historically what happened <clears throat> with some of the newcomers here is that years ago the review had a decision made by an individual about closing lots. We strongly recommend they come from the Transportation Park Commission to review and endorsement or no objection or however you want to phrase it, but uh, you know, just a basically allow the city property to be used as the oversight of the central services department. Okay. Uh, so it's made as a democratic process of a group that has some power as opposed to one individual making the decision. Okay. Well, that, that, that explanation is helpful. Does anyone want to make a motion? And then we approve the request to use the strong avenue parking lot for the city council, uh, for the uh, chamber of commerce function on Second. a second. We'll talk to the Northampton Rail Center and get back to you on what the response is, but we'll say it has to come down by 10, not soon. Okay. Um, so Ms. Bruce has made the motion. Mr. Cooper has seconded. The uh, motion is amended. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. <coughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I would like to um, continue with the items for which we have special uh, visitors. Uh, the next one is um, Ms. Melinda Shaw has come here to discuss the Rainbow Crosswalk Talk. Melinda Shaw, I'm going to be very lovely here from the Well, I'm going to be very because that probably already know the whole story. Um, uh, reached out to various members of the city government and met with the uh, Public Works Commission. Um, they have approved it and uh, created this diagram of what it should look like. Uh, I guess it went in front of the public to um, the Gazette with comments. So, you know, some people, a lot of people like it, a few people don't. Um, Everyone else has agreed that I've gone to. Bill Dwight um, approved it. The mayor approved it. Um, so I guess it's uh, a formality. I don't, I don't really know who has the ultimate deciding um, yay or nay, but um, we're going ahead. I guess the paint's already been ordered. And um, unless you all strongly object, then um, I'm hoping that we're going to have this painted in time for five days. I get. I just got a chance to read James uh, Laurel's position, mm -hmm. and I, I'm just. I think it's a great idea, uh, but I have to look at it in terms of the statute. So I just need some clarification for us to enforce it um, for anybody being struck in a crosswalk or failing to stop in a crosswalk. The statute's very clear. That it has to be marked in accordance with standards established by the Department of Highways. I went and did the research on Mass DOT, um, which gives the patterns, which the pattern would match. Uh, and it refers to MUTCDs, colored pavements. Um, the guidance is colored pavements used as traffic control devices should be used only when they contrast significantly with adjoining paved areas. And the standards of colored pavements shall not be used as a traffic control device unless devices. Uh, applied at all times, and color pavements use the traffic control devices shall be limited to the color yellow and the color white. So, did 
James done any research about other communities having different colored crosswalks, whether they meet the standards or not? So I, 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 again, I think it's a great idea. Um, but I don't want to be in a position where a defense attorney challenges a motor vehicle stop, or we end up in a civil case because someone's injured in a crosswalk, and the attorney says, that's not a standard crosswalk under the Department of Transportation rules, and it's a client does not. Well, I think if you look on um, in front of Smith College, you'll see that we already don't comply. There were brick crosswalks there that are not painted the same as downtown. And I think also if you look at the downtown, you'll see this variation. there are variations in crosswalks from town to town, city to city, all over Massachusetts. Um, I don't know who would enforce it, but there is not uniform uniformity. I, I, I appreciate it. Said it's not yeah. true. I'm just, I've got to bring it up because I've got to bring it up. It's my job. Yeah. I don't and know how much research DPDW did and the board did before they approved it. I don't think the board person did any. Jim probably did some research on it, but <clears> uh, he did mention that I believe Turner's Falls has art in their sidewalks up there that are painted differently. I know many years ago the Transportation Parking Commission recommended that they move to the ladder design that we currently use now. And I think what Melinda is referring to, the differences of diagonals and longitudinal bars are just leftovers from the past. As they wear down, we're not replacing them. We're trying to make everything fairly uniform throughout. Um, the board unanimously supported this idea that came out. Um, uh, I didn't realize that there was a particular issue with yellow and white being the standard. It's, it's the research I did. You know, I mean, they, they recommend if you do color, you do color inside two horizontal white lines. So there's clear delineation. So this design doesn't show that. So that will go back to the old standard of having white longitudinal lines going across with these bars in between them. That's what they recommend for color. And I don't, again, I'm not trying to, I think it's a great idea, but I, I've got to look ahead to that. Right, because I did some research also on the internet of, of Googling other cities that have done this, and I noticed that. Part of the few communities have the longitudinal rain rainbows running across the road with the white in advance on both directions. Mm -hmm. So it clearly shows that there is a sidewalk or a crosswalk, but they had the lines, with, like I said, running longitudinal there that would um, be part of the inside of the, the crosswalk itself. But like I said, we've been getting away from that particular standard for the past seven or eight, nine years now. Uh, well, I was just going to um, propose a different alternative, which is that, uh, of course, the pavement is black, but it's shown white here. It's all white except where the, where the, where the color is. What about uh, actually keeping the, the white bars that we have now in between the colored bars, or alternating color, white, color, white, color? And then you would have maybe satisfied the, I mean, wouldn't that satisfy MUTCD and, and um, DOT standards? But it's a different pattern. It's very nice. yes. How is it? Uh, this block is 3.16 and 3 feet between the blocks. And current one is 2 by 16 and 2 feet between them. Okay, so we couldn't keep the current one, but we could. Well, the current one is faded anyway. It would need to be cleaned and repainted even if it were going to stay the same. So what you're saying is basically start with a white swath and then color it over. Some, for instance, that, that was the same thing. Um, I'm, uh, I had my MUTCD out on the counter to bring today. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's a very uh, rule-based book for a reason. And the reason is so that people expect information to be communicated from the highway to the drivers. And I think the more we vary that, the more we're uh, risking, just as the chief said, not being as clear as we can be as a, as a town in communicating the crossing place and the rules that go along with it. So I'm, in my view, we follow the MUTCD, and the state of Massachusetts has to either write its own uh, traffic control device text or adopt the federal MUTCD. So there's a state layer in there that says we adopt these rules. And so uh, I'm very leery, particularly in a town that's recently had a pedestrian fatality. 
to go about changing for design reasons or uh, to communicate a, a, a message that is, is wonderfully vibrant in our town already. But I'm, I'm not for changing our traffic control devices to do that. And the only other, not out the wall thought, was the standard crosswalk with crosswalk chalk to do the rainbow. <laughs> The crosswalks design a reality, but you could do the rainbow thing in not a long term permanent manner. But I, that's just a thought I had. I mean, you know, I've read the articles, the preference of the longer term uh, rainbow crosswalk. But. And just quick point of clarification this is this is permanent insulation that you have in mind. Uh, it's only as permanent as any crosswalk. It okay. would need to be repainted every year. But you do envision it, not just the seasonal. Seasonal insulation, but in fact, you're it, it's special paint. It's epoxy based paint, so it would last as long as it lasts. I okay. don't know what the current crosswalk paint is, so I don't know that it has a set longevity. Okay, thank you, Council. I think um, for public record purposes, I'd, I'd like to note that we received a number of letters from uh, folks in the community, and I've also talked to a couple of residents in Ward 7 where I'm the city councilor, all of whom have had two, I'd say, two kind of categories of concern. Um, one is the time and money spent um, in terms of DPW time putting into painting, um, prepping, anything along those lines when we are in a kind of crisis right now in terms of potholes and plowing and all kinds of winter issues. DPW has come under um, a lot of pressure around uh, needing to be putting all of its resources into tending to these things and uh, these residents and the letters that we've received said that they're concerned that this is um, taking away from that focus. So that's one of the categories. The other category is um, people are concerned that it's setting a precedent for all kinds of other groups that other groups can come forward um, that might have political underpinnings or uh, just kind of ethical uh, beliefs or something that could be counter to what this city wants to put forward. And how do you say no if we've set a precedent with um, one particular symbol um, in the crosswalk? So I, I do want to bring those to everybody's attention and just um, give these letters and the comments that I've heard do. Well, you do realize that the crosswalk needs to be repainted. So the prep time and the painting is only a different color. Everything else would be the same. So we're paying for the paint. I don't know that there's any additional work that needs to go into it to paint it a different color. And the other thing is that the letters that you get, of course, are going to be, you know, people that have dissension. The people that support it think it's great. They don't. They don't write letters. So I mean, I think that if it were going to be turned down. It better not be for political reasons, because you know that's going to have a backlash in a community like ours. Um, I'm sure that people will come up with lots of examples of ways that different groups, whether political, religious, whatever, have made their mark on Northampton. Putting a rainbow crosswalk, I can understand if it costs the city um, in terms of legality, but if, it's, if you're going to use political, I'd be very careful about that one. Is the goal to have this done by the parade? That is our goal, yes. Okay. For the parade? I am not associated with the parade. Um, symbolically, that would be ideal. It's not, you know, it doesn't have to be. It's not a guarantee. So, um, some of it depends on weather, some of it depends on you know, we're not asking the DPW to, you know, change their schedule um, of cleaning or do anything special for this. We're asking them to do it in accordance with what their plan was already. Uh, as an acknowledgement for the diversity of our community uh, and the goal of the, of the May 3rd that correct? parade, I would follow up on the chief recommendation that it would be temporary. Uh, temporary in what way? something that would wash away after a day. Well, then I, I removed my 
desire to do it. And as I said, I don't know who makes the decisions. So the DPW has already signed off on it. I guess if you guys want to contest it, then somebody needs to come up with you know some kind of legal reason and put it in writing and give it to them and they're going to have to make a decision on it. I don't know exactly what your mechanisms are for saying, you know, no. Uh, I understand the, uh, <coughs> the concerns that uh, Devin, you raised that, that, um, that it's, it doesn't conform to standards and um, I guess I'm okay with that. And uh, there's a uh, there's a, a, a different uh, philosophy that says, in fact, when things are unpredictable, drivers pay more attention. And uh, much of traffic calming around the world is based on that principle. And I think this, in fact, would comply with that, that principle, that philosophy that uh, um, if there is unpredictability, the drivers slow down, they pay more attention. Um, so I feel as if it's, my personal feeling is unlikely to make uh, a significant change in safety in downtown, unless the paint is less visible, uh, especially at night. And that's, I'm sure, the reason behind the stipulation that it should be white or yellow. And so I just wonder if, if there isn't some way that, that both criteria can be satisfied. You know, A, a rainbow in long-lasting paints, and B, highly visible. And uh, uh, you know, my guess is, unless it's reflective paint, anything darker than the yellow, one here is going to be less visible. So, well, if you go online and look up uh, on Google, I don't know if you have wireless access right now. If you just Google rainbow crosswalks, you'll see five or ten different designs, and one of them is like ours, but it has this the white along each edge of it. So it delineates the front of it and the back of it as you're going through, and that might be a nice compromise because. Um, that would definitely be reflective paint. I don't know what Jim specked out for this paint. I know it's you know it's definitely road paint, and you have to special order some of the colors. But so if you draw, I guess you're calling it the longitudinal lines along the sides of the um, steps. Make those in white. James. So, yeah. So go ahead and like do that. You'll you'll see a picture of that on Google, and I mean I don't think it, it looks as aesthetically nice, but if if it conforms to what you need, then we can do that. And the, the MUTCD says it has to be uh, no less than six inches, so it's not a usually uh, intrusive line. On the ladder style, six six compared to sixteen. No, is that right? The white. The white. Well, have, these are three feet, and this would be sixteen. Six. Oh, six inches, yes. Well, not that anyone can see this, but these are some of these um, examples. Yeah, if you can click on that one, do you see it? And bring it up bigger, maybe people can see it better. The only crosswalks must consist of two parallel lines that shall not be less than six inches and greater than 24 inches in width. So six inches isn't a lot. You fill it in with the rainbow, you've got minimally acceptable crosswalk markings. And you can get your colors. What about the idea of keeping the continental design, the ladder, doing the rainbow colors, but in between, keeping the high reflective white markings like it shows here, and pretend that all that's outside of it is black pavement, so you can see that contrast. It will go red to white to orange to yellow to white, just alternating, and we would paint the white like we typically do our normal crosswalks with reflective beads and so on, so they'd have that visibility. I like that also because the predictability. You did a good job of making crosswalks. So what you were saying, then the crosswalks are the same as normally is, and then you put it in the rainbow. So the black pavement, you have colors. The black pavement would be. Yeah, and I don't think it hurts to have those parallel lines on the yeah. side too, just, just to right. bring it all together. You know, if that's something that's required in the, in the mm -hmm. regulations. We could add that. Typically do a foot. A foot, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> Director Huntley and Armand, do you have a suggestion that you were talking about? Dave was uh, offering the fact that maybe we 
besides the ladder design, we actually add longitudinal lines going across also perpendicular lines. It gives additional support of enhancing it, like James is showing up there. Uh, however, that is not our standard that we use. Um, I think as long as we have that white in between the, the, the colors, that will be a reasonable standard that the TPC approved a number of years ago that they wanted to move to. So there's a picture here with the, the perpendicular white lines. Does that make sense? It's kind of small. Where is that picture from, Cassie? Vancouver, I think. Vancouver, Canada. Somewhere in Vancouver. Yeah, city of Vancouver. Any other? Um, from what I understand from consultants, if the, the broad long line meets the best, so it's, it's all about contrast. So putting the horizontal bars really doesn't do much, it actually takes away from the con contrast. So as you approach it, and the, the higher the speed, the longer the line, it makes more visible. And we know that this is a low speed area. We know it's a high density pedestrian crossing area. It's well lit. There's a lot of things um, in our favor in that regard. And I think the right solution is, in fact, I thought about this uh, last week, when, when the Board of Public Works approved this, is that um, if there were any issues that came up, you simply put white lines in between. Or really what you'd be doing is putting in a standard crosswalk, our standard, slightly wider lines. Our standard is one foot on center or two foot, I'm sorry, one foot wide, three foot on center or two foot wide, four foot on center. That's our standard. This would be three foot wide, six foot on center. And you paint the pavement um, with the color pattern in between. And therefore we have a, a, an MUTC approved crosswalk with a different color pavement. And there's nothing about color of pavement I don't think, as long as we have enough contrast. Um, and so I think if you have pavement before this and pavement after this, and if we use the glass beads and the white so you have a reflective surface at night, um, I think we're going to have a very safe crosswalk that I doubt um, could be legally uh, um, disputed um, if there's a problem. I was just going to address uh, one point of the categories of concerns that constituents have written about that they mentioned last point. It doesn't seem to be a special interest. I mean, the rainbow is symbolic of tolerance and inclusiveness. It's not. It's not just a you know symbol of, of gay, lesbian, etc. It's a symbol of. I mean, that may be disputable, but I, I think it, it's certainly arguable. It is a symbol of inclusiveness, and it doesn't seem to be a special interest. Comments. I would also like to say, as a member of the Board of Public Works and the Board did approve this unanimously, I would hope that this, this commission can find a way to come up with a, a compromise that would satisfy everybody's desires, concerns. But again, yeah. it's just a legal issue, I think. You know, I, filling in with the white and the colors, you, get, you reach minimal I mean, right. TCDs. Should be legally challengeable, you know, but I always worry about these things. It's, it's, everybody knows it's a crosswalk, but you get in a court. Sometimes it's not a crosswalk, you know. So we, we meet minimum standards. We get the <laughs> rainbow. Hmm? We want you to be worried about it. Well, yeah. That was the worst case scenario. But um, it meets the minimum standard MUTCD, and we fill in with the colors. Mm -hmm. We get the rainbow. We get a safe crosswalk. The only thing I can see a problem with this is application with white and uh, so That's the only problem I can see is application for it. Because we can paint it white, then we can put blocks on it. Uh, the only problem I'm not sure if it's uh, the, uh, the resin that we want to use for this crosswalk is going to hold on to paint. So it's kind of hard to put it in. Are you doing thermal or are you doing paint? We do paint. We do paint. And so you're only, only when we do new pavement work, we actually have the contract to put on thermal plastic. And so your concern is where there is existing paint on the crosswalk now that it will not hold? That, that existence is going to be grind, as far as I understood. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the crosswalk parts, the uh, colored one, is not going to be paint. It's going to be resin. Mm -hmm. So. It's close to thermoplastic, and uh, 
had to flip with this thing. Uh, it's pretty durable and good material. The overall, what I'm thinking is, if we're going to grind it, that I mean, definitely we have to put paint on it. I'm not sure if it's going to hold down on paint. I don't understand. If we, so we grind the asphalt and then we're putting on the asphalt either white paint or colored paint. We, so are you concerned can, that the colored paint will not adhere to the asphalt? No, the color will. It will, but uh, then we have a problem like it's going to be kind of hard to put the white color to white color. Hard because um, or don't we already don't we already put white in, in, in a similar pattern, different spacing, but a similar pattern? I'm a little concerned about overspray. Yes. Yeah, so it requires some masking. Oh, okay. Yeah. So keeping it clean. Yes. Okay, good crystal on. Or do they have to above? Alice, in your research on this, do they have a white epoxy also? Um, I'm pretty sure. I, I mean, I have to have answers here. But if they do, it's going to be expensive. Yeah, we're talking about like another. Oh, you're doubling the cost. But I want a piece of cardboard uh, or plywood, three feet by sixteen feet, served just fine to mask. So you just you know, after you paint the colors, let it dry, mask them with cardboard, and and apply the white. If I understand the, the problem. Maybe probably a one foot wide strip would do it. Just on the edges? Yeah, using a, a spray, a nearly spray, and it's not going to overspray the pad. It's not going to be sprayed, it's going to be a roll. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's epoxy is rolled. But the white could, I mean, I'm, we, we I'm not an engineer, but. <laughs> we spray paint our crosswalks, is what we do. We have different gun heads on for widths. This letter says it's paint. Pardon? Mm -hmm. It says we'll be using a paint design for street pavement parking. That's the color. It's, it's actually an epoxy, is oh. what it is. It's got about a 15 minute cure time on it. Any other comments? <coughs> Engineering questions? Um, well, I think before we kind of close this out, I would just like to say that we, we, we have two separate things we're debating here. And one is not really debating. One is the principle of um, establishing something like this in the center of town. And I think it reflects principles that most people agree with and want to support very much. Um, and when you hear a debate about this in this commission, it's in fact not negative debate at all. It's a debate about how to make that happen technically and, and meet safety challenges. And I think that debate is, is an excellent one to have. Um, so, you know, I think that whatever we do, we need to have some kind of clarity on, on what, this, what the safety requirements are here. And if this commission is satisfied that adding these additional white inter, inter, interlaced white lines satisfies safety, and, and you, and as an organizer of this project, would also be amenable to that minor alteration to your design, um, then it seems like we've reached agreement about, what, about how to accomplish this, to express the principle, but also do it safe, uh, safely in accordance with mass law and so forth. Um, so is that, if, if indeed we did do this, the, well, the low and farm model, um, it's because James proposed it and everyone else proposed it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I mean, is is yes, that something that's, that's acceptable to you? Yes. Okay. Either with or without the parallel lines on the side is fine. Great. And from from our side, from the engineering side, is that acceptable in terms of safety standards that we wish to adhere to in our hand? To our knowledge now, or is further research required? I think it meets the, the criteria outlined by the MUTCD, which is the standard we tried to go by, by having those white bars interlaced in between. And could you, what is that acronym? Uh, the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices, the MUTCD. Which is a state? That's a federal. Do you believe it does meet those requirements? I believe it does. When the, the white laddering. 
Well, absolutely. Filling them, whether it's black or red or blue, as long as you have those that effect, that visibility, uh, without even without the horizontal lines, either one would work. The one you pick, I think would be, it, I know would be just fine. And there's still one more process after this commission. Also, is the fact that it's being a gift to the city. Um, it would have to be accepted by city council. I'll uh, note for full disclosure that because of a gene transmitted to me by my grandfather, I am colorblind, so I'm not able to enjoy this. <laughs> um, well, so that being the case, um, is, is there a motion for us to consider today? So What's the motion? Uh, I move to uh, approve the uh, uh, implementation of a rainbow colored crosswalk in astrophysically correct color sequence um, with the slight modification that it also include the normal reflective white paint in between these color bars so that it conforms with MUTCD and our uh, city standards. Second. Second. Okay. Um, I would I would just offer a friendly amendment to say that I would like to kind of make it a little more general. Maybe we could say for other arrangement of additional paint to satisfy the requirements, some of that effect, so that we're not we're not painting it. Um, oh, okay. Whatever we whatever we have to add to your design to make it acceptable for safety. If that makes sense. I accept it friendly. Okay. So, um, Mr. Lowenthal makes the motion and second the director. Oh, is your chief? Chief, oh, chief second. second. Sorry. Sorry. Don't mm -hmm. cross the chief. Um, so we have a motion before us, and just for the record, is that is this okay? Yes. Okay. 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 Great. Um, so, all in favor of doing this? Aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, well, thank you very much, and, and Ms. Shaw, I'd like, to, um, I'd like to thank you for your time and standing there for however long it's been. The clock has, has come down, because uh, even the clock can't stand having been on the wall for as long as it's been. But thank you very much, and thank you for thank your advocacy. All right. Um, all right, so the next... Um, it's 4.53. So the next um, item is, um, again, I'd like to move this up because we have visitors. I'd like to do reports from committees, if that's okay. And um, I see Ms. Holly Mott in the audience. Do uh, you want to tell us about the parking committee? Sure. Thank you. Um, quickly, uh, our committee has reconvened since you all voted in our new member. Uh, we had our first meeting uh, on March 6th, and we're meeting again this Thursday on the 20th, uh, and that will be our standing meeting moving forward is that uh, third Thursday of the month. Um, we are currently four citizens, the three uh, that were on the committee throughout, and the one that you have voted in most recently, as well as uh, Wayne Fiden. Um, and we are very much committed to finding, uh, hopefully, uh, at least one, hopefully two new, more members, um, preferably from the downtown business community. Um, so I encourage you all, if you have any contacts uh, in the downtown business community that you feel would have um, uh, an important voice in this committee, please encourage them to apply. The application is on the city's website. Um, through a link from this commission's page to the parking committee. Um, and we are, uh, we've made it our first uh, order of business since reconvening to review the parking re reform package uh, to form our recommendations and to share those back to this commission. Uh, that's the reform package that was sent our way several months ago, uh, authored by Owen Freeman. Daniels and some other folks, um, and it is our goal to try and get those recommendations back to this commission within the next 60 days, um, and I'll just add that that 60 days is uh, not a, a time that the committee officially agreed on, but I'm inserting it here because I think that is our goal, to really 
get through that informed package, do the research we can do, and get back recommendations to this commission as soon as possible. Um, and uh, on that note, we also want to ask this commission to use us uh, wherever we can offer our help um, and our perspective as citizen members um, and hopefully soon downtown business members as well. Um, we would very much like to be able to support this commission um, and weigh any particular items that either come to or from this commission um, in, in our unique forum. So I encourage you all to remember us and share those items wherever we can be of service. Thank you very much. Any questions for, for Ms. Mott? What, what time are those meetings on Thursdays? They are from 5 to 7. In uh, as long as we can in 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 uh, Mr. Biden's office. <laughs> I should probably know this, but that parking reform package you talk about mm -hmm. uh, is that available? Um, it it must be. I don't know where you would find it. I assume it came through this committee, this commission's agenda at some time. Um, I can send it to you if you'd like. Well, I was exposed to this. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. I it's, see. Yeah, I, was I think here it was August. Uh, I think it was August of 2013. Okay. But you're working from a framework. Yes. Anything you would want to add about our discussion of the parking? We just discussed using parking lot downtown. Did you have any further thoughts on that? Um, I no, not really. I think you all asked all the <laughs> questions I was thinking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. Are there other committees that could report? Um, Thirty-five. I don't know if you report on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't really think we have. Well, public transportation isn't being right now. Yeah, okay. Have we changed the name of that committee official? Okay. Um, all right. So now we, we, we're done. So now we're on item seven, um, which is an item Mr. Hargraves raised. <clears throat> it's a discussion of two parts of the code that established the parking commission. <coughs> Section 22.121, parking receipts, and Section 22.122, uh, related to the, to the budget. And uh, Mr. Hargraves, you have raised this. Uh, I raised the issue to you and to uh, Alyssa about it. Uh, after the discussion was last time about uh, the shared cars and the issue uh, of lost revenues to the, to the parking, sent me back to look at, at our, our charter in the TPC. And again, I'm exposing myself with not perhaps seeing uh, anything in the past year regarding uh, a report from the city collector on the revenues that we received from uh, parking and, and associated items. And the other one uh, having to do with, what was it? Budget. budget, yeah. Last year we had a discussion, a very short discussion, about a budget. Um, and it, it occurred at a time when uh, there were a lot of small issues in front of the board. Things that were kind of frustrating that we, it was going to have to send citizens through the, the whole process to get us all, something small done. And there, was, there was talk at that time of creating a budget so we could we could handle it within this, within this commission and do it more quickly. And really, I brought it up for the counselors, but also for the, another discussion this year. Uh, and that's, that was my reasoning. Uh, I don't know the process from, from that point on, but at least I wanted to start a discussion on it. Thank you. Um, is there any discussion? <laughs> as far as the parking receipts, is that outlined in the budget each year as to what revenues were received in the prior fiscal year in the narrative or anything for that? 
perhaps Nancy could elaborate on it. She watches over us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, we just wanted to make sure that the information that is out there was presented to you so that you know where it is. Um, The collector's office does break down parking tickets, parking meter revenue for on-street parking meters and parking machines, parking lot revenue, that would be off-street parking meters and machines, the revenue from the garage, both the pay as you stay, the fee for the garage, and the monthly garage pass holders, um, as well as parking pass revenue such as the long-term parking passes for the outside lots, um, things such as the, the meter bag rental system, um, and the parking space rentals for dumpsters, when the dumpsters are occupying those spaces. Um, these accounts are in Munis, which is the city operating software. Um, these are processed every week, and they are turned over to the general ledger, uh, which is maintained by the auditors and by the finance director. Um, I do have a copy of these items, um, and they are not only maintained in units, but they're maintained in a ledger book um, by the collector's office. Um, and they are broken down on a weekly basis um, so that amounts taken in by tickets, meters, lots, um, the garage, um, the police garage, the new, the new garage, over the structure over on Gothic Street, um, passes and handicap uh, permit fees right? and handicap fines. These are all broken down on a weekly basis. Um, so it, it is out there and, and it is accessible. And like I said, I do have a, a listing of the items that are uh, broken down. Thank you very much. All right, that, uh, Ms. Bruce. I think by way of history, that came up when we were talking about raising the parking rates, and we wondered if we had the data to analyze it. And that's more detailed than I thought we had then. So, thank you. I'm pleased it, to hear it that. It is broken down. But and the second detailed. piece of history was the committee previously discussed whether we could get to parking funds in order to do traffic mitigation. And uh, it was the chief's opinion that maybe that wasn't, that we didn't. We could not, as a committee, capture income, and we took that question to the solicitor and got a, an answer that no, the committee could not decide what to do with parking money, that that wasn't this committee's purview. Um, the other thing about budget, though, is that recognize that NET has put in a request every year for $100,000 to the capital improvement. Fund and that uh, I'm under the impression that beginning in 2015 that might happen. So, yes, sir. Yes, um, we placed in our annual request for $100,000 each year. And if I remember correctly, um, the mayor has proposed to the city council for approval in the FI, uh, actually the capital year 15 capital improvement budget. I'm trying to remember, Don, I think it was slightly over two hundred fifty or three hundred thousand dollars over a five year period for traffic calming in the city. I had, you know, I had a question on the way, the way I interpreted that aspect was that there would be an annual report or a summer report on those, those lists of things you just provided. Well, they, they are processed on a, on a weekly basis and um, broken down for the fiscal year um, and, and are available through, I would assume, Susan Wright um, as a finance director. Yeah. And Nancy, Nancy yeah. you, you may not know that what we're looking at here is a city ordinance that says the city collector shall make annual reports to the commission of all monies collected for the user occupancy of parking meters. Right. Places, et Right, I, yeah. that's the 22-121. Oh, okay, so you do, you do that, um, yeah. And uh, 
the city collector um, is basically unaware and has not been asked to do so, as far as um, her recollection of this. Joe wanted you to know that it is broken mm -hmm. now. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it might be interpreted because the ordinance required me to make an annual report about X, Y, and Z to the, the city, and I do so in my budget documents <clears throat> and the narrative and in the charts for the income and the expenditures and everything. So it may say report to the committee because we wanted that, <coughs> but her funker annual report is much like mine. It shows all income, what the expenditures were, and then it's, it's embedded in Susan Ray in, in the overall sure. report. In the mayor's budget, you will find not a breakdown as finite as that, but parking meter, um, parking fines, and as Devin mentioned, there's particular ways that you can spend that money for certain things, uh, like the parking meter reserves receipt fund. It could be used for public safety issues downtown, which includes police personnel, they support nine salaries. They buy three cruisers a year for me out of that. And that's, that's a fund that's reflected in the mayor's budget. It shows where all those the parking receipts and the various incomes come from. So is that what you were looking for, that level of detail? No, well, I was just referring to our, our charter when it said within our within our our goals. That the collector reports to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, I don't want to create any extra work. <laughs> if it's there, fine. Yeah. You know, it's but it would I that discussion we had about the, the shared car usage and the and the mention of $4,500 a year loss uh, for a parking space, giving up a, a parking space for, loses $4,500 for the city. Kind of got my attention, so I went back and started looking at what we were supposed to be doing. And I think to get a better understanding of where all this fits in, I would personally would like to see if, you know, if, it's, if it's available, I'll find it, or I'll make a request. I don't know, but it seems as if the commission has the background necessary requested. So, simple as that. Okay. Other questions? Well, well, thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Before we move on. Before we move on. Yes. The capital budget that you requested mm -hmm. doesn't reflect any any allotment <coughs> for this this commission. No. So the budget for, that budget for this commission would have to. There's a process for doing that. Um, so I'm not looking at you, but I'm looking at you. Actually, the rest of us. We wish. Yeah, we, they haven't had budgets in the past, haven't they? So, no. so all budgets come from the mayor, so the budget could, in theory, create a budget for the committee. As a matter of practice, I think without exception, departments get budgets, committees do. So the Board of Public Works, for example, doesn't have a budget. They have involvement with the next budget. So that, and I think that's pretty true across the board. So that I don't know if any, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know of any committees themselves that have a budget. The departments that they work with have budgets. I wonder why we're included. Ms. Bruce? Well, well, I think the commission would have to make a decision about whether or not they want to include the DPW is our mechanism for making changes to the street. So that's, that, I, I view that as uh, a way to get things done. So I don't, I don't, I, I never felt the committee would have its own budget. That's not, um, that has to juggle all sorts of things. The only committee that I'm, I'm personally aware of, because I sit on it, is the uh, Northampton Energy and Sustainability Commission, who has access to some funds for... It's a revolving loan fund. All right. That's why, uh, for example, the building committee is established. City Council votes for the establishment and empowers them to gather funds, fund funds, pay bills, etc. by virtue of information. What you're saying is there's an ordinance that says that we have that authority or that we should? It, it's within our, we're supposed to see uh, out, out of the city ordinance says that budget can be proposed. Oh, and actually, I'll be saying everyone. Remember the discussion we had last year. 22-122. And it was long enough ago that whole discussion is not part of my memory. So, uh, but I know we ended up not getting one or not proposing one. And if that's the thing that struck me is that sometimes there's an easier way, easier way to do things in the city government. But not always. The, you still have to end up 
going through. A lot of people came up here. A lot of things have been solved in less than a thousand bucks. Yet we would have to send them away without any firm understanding of what the next steps were, except that it was going to take a long time to get something done. Simple as that. Okay. I guess if there's not, if there's not any other discussion, I guess I would propose. I mean, I, I, as chair, I could just I could talk to the mayor about how he sees this commission falling. Into, his, into the budget process and bring an answer next meeting. That'd be great. Okay. Okay. I achieved what I was going to do. Great. Thank you. Um, oh, Jason okay. oh, Wayne will remember. I think we've discussed this in terms of administrative support, but Dave's predecessor actually rolled it into parking to give us some administrative support. Right. So, so the history was, you know, the, this committee was sort of functions were taken out of different departments. You know, so, so the reason that four of us, the department heads, is that we all had, had some involvement with pieces of the committee. And so when the committee was first created, there was discussion of different models. The original model said staffing would be done by parking. That never really happened. That's how somehow Mary got stuck with staffing it. Um, and so I think they, were, they wrote, wrote the ordinances sort of thinking, we don't know how this is going to evolve. Um, it was after the committee was created that Ned was authorized to create the traffic engineer position. And so to some extent, a lot of the substantive work that we thought maybe would someday be a staff person in the committee was, is being done by now by Alex. So I, I think it's sort of a remnant of, the, of this committee being created, and that never, that never came to be. Well, and just to fit into what your plans are, um, I wrote the mayor uh, recounting the history of the traffic calming projects we've received, how many people have come before us, and how we really didn't have a budget to work with. And I think I'd, I'd like to say that had who knows whether that affected his decision. But I mean, we are now facing a situation where you do have some capital improvement funds here, you know, designated for traffic calming. So I view that as a great success. Very positive. Yeah. Great, thank you. Anything else? <clears throat> okay. Um, before we go to the next agenda, I just I note that uh, Councillor Murphy, um, Councillor Murphy is, is in the audience. Uh, Councillor, I don't know if you hear from any anything in particular. Oh, the middle street when you get there. Okay. Um, well, since you're here, why why don't we move? Thank you. Middle street up, um, if that's okay with everybody. Um, uh, let's see. Where are we? Okay. Yeah, item 13 is going to move up. So who's who's best to, to lead this discussion? Rick, if I know you best to lead it. No, I'm not being on the committee. I have any problem. Well, it's what, someone help me by recounting the history of this ordinance. And Make it sort of bad. That's what it is. says a meeting. <laughs> I'll, I'll go quick if I, if I can catch you up with it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. It, it's like Star Wars. It started a long, long time ago, like <laughs> council sessions ago. It's been carried over twice into new council sessions, and the ordinance is still alive in this council. Um, it, it's started with a you know, successful commercial development on Main Street in Florence. Middle Street runs parallel to Main Street, and uh, one of the Main Street office buildings got filled up with medical uses, and as we know, medical uses, you know, they're like airlines. You know, they can take, see five people an hour, so they book six, because if somebody canceled, they don't lose any billable hours. So there's a lot of cars there. Their parking lot wound up being large enough for a typical office building, I guess, but not for complete medical use. So they got their staff parking on the residential street of Middle Street. And, and this ordinance actually came out of this committee initially back when Councillor Carney chaired it. That was a long time ago. Um, and it's been kind of percolating along. We did try a 120-day, uh, two-hour parking from 8 to 6, I think, just to turn over the traffic on Middle Street. Because what's happening is the staff has been advised to park on Middle Street to free up spaces in the lot for the patients of the physicians. So they just basically park on Middle Street from 8 in the morning till 5 at night. So, you know, if you only have one space in your driveway, and I think one of the people that started off at a family funeral and they invited people over after the funeral and they couldn't park anywhere near the house, 
because Mill Street is basically commercial parking all day long. Um, some of the issues were too close to my driveway, too close to the corner. Um, so what if we did the 120 days, that helped some, but one of the compromises that came out of it was that we would paint spaces on Middle Street like around on Main Street so that people would know where to park. Last year, Mr. Huntley's crew went out and put the spaces in there, and that has helped to some extent because now with the fine spaces, they're not too close to the corner, they're not too close to people's driveways, so that part of it work. But it still hasn't solved the problem that basically the same cars are in the same spaces in front of the same houses from 8 to 5 every weekday which still kind of vexes the, the folks there. And it's only exacerbated in the winter when the street gets narrower. So essentially it's you know one-way traffic past this whole string of cars. Um, so I, when I saw it come up on your agenda, I didn't know what you were talking about, but I do want to come and remind you that on, on the council side, the ordinance is still out there uh, and carried over to this session for action. At some point, the, the neighbors there still seem to think they'd like to get the ordinance back to our parking from you know, 8 in the morning till 6 at night. Uh, but I didn't know why it was coming back to your agenda, so I just showed up to sort of eavesdrop on what your discussion was and to remind you that uh, the, 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 the ordinance itself is still alive out there for action at some point in time. And the neighbors do like the services, but they'd like to have the, have the ordinance back too. And obviously the medical building people don't want the ordinance back because then they have to move their cars around and they can't stay there all day. Well, thank you. That, that's helpful. I, my question is, this is upon the recommendation of the Transportation and Parking Commission. Does that mean we... Originally, it came out of here with a positive recommendation. Okay. Because the residents came here and asked for the... And it came out of there. But then, to, to sort of ease the effect of it, we tried it for a test just to make sure it worked before we imposed it. Uh -huh. Then, well, that seemed to work, but we wanted to try the space to see if that solved the whole problem. It really didn't. So that's how we got where we are. Um, the, the signage is down, the poles are there, but the signs are down, uh, but the, the spaces have helped. They just like to put the signs back up again. Okay. So. But now it's before us again, so... And I don't know why, so... They're, they're, okay, neither do I. I don't know who brought it up. <laughs> so no one knows anything. Great. It was, it was me. Uh, uh, it was Alex. I got a complaint from one, one of the residents, and, I mean, we figured out that complaint, but then I had to look in the audience, and I found trial ordinance that was uh, implemented on August 15, 2013 as a trial parking spaces and that ordinance is uh, right now in December, mid-December 2013. So that's when it expired? Yeah, expired, yeah. Uh, so post and Mark's parking space is still there. The signage uh, had to take it out because audience expired. Mm -hmm. So I think they had to make it permanent or remove it. Um, this, can I ask Ms. Ma, has the parking committee looked at this? Uh, this is only anecdotally has been mentioned, but it's not been on our agenda to review. We've not discussed it at any length. And since this has started a long, long time ago, <coughs> Um, and it's cleared this commission before, um, do you feel this is something that would have to be looked at by the parking committee or is it sufficient that this has been in process for a long time and maybe it's an exception and you wouldn't have to bring it before the parking committee? Yeah, I don't know that it's ever the case that something would have to go by us. We'd certainly, you know, be willing to take the bone and chew on it if you wanted us to do that. Um, certainly, uh, I think if this one is tricky because it does have such a long history, and for us to come into it now um, could be, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Okay. I think it's a. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Uh, is this. We're, we're not in a position to establish the, ord the ordinances out there, just the recommendations from this commission going forward to the, to the city council that have become permanent? My understanding is this is the ordinance that was put in was a temp by its nature temporary. It had an expiration date on it, which was December. And, and there was two. There was the original one to limit the parking, and then the I think the one you're responding to most recently was the one to paint the spaces. But I, I don't really understand how it's a temporary. You know, the spaces are painted and they're still there. So even though 
I, I don't. I didn't really get the temporary part of the spaces since they're there and they're working. And uh, I, I'm assuming you're not going to go up and erase them and put the extra effort into that when they're not hurting anything being there. They just organize the parking a little better. That's right. The spaces remain, but the signs gone. Right. Okay. And this ordinance that we have would put the sign back. Is that correct? It would. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if it's technically expired at the city council level, doesn't the original sponsor have to refile it? The well, what ex the the ordinance the ordinance I think made it through first reading, and in between the two, the council inserted a 120-day test so that they wouldn't make the ordinance perfect permanent if in fact it didn't actually solve the problem. The residents felt it solved the problem, but when the 120-day test was over. People said, well, shucks, maybe the spaces would solve the problem. So then it just took a while to get the spaces because of that it was winter. Then we had to get on the agenda to paint the spaces. So it took quite a while to get the spaces in there. Um, so the, the, the ordinance, as it still lives, is for permanent restriction two hours, eight in the morning till six at night. But we, for, for three or four years now, have been fiddling with trying other things to see if it would solve the problem short of a permanent ordinance on the parking restriction. Um, the space, both, both the 8 to 6 help and the spaces help solve different things. One helped turn the cars over, one helped encroachment on corners and driveways. But at this point, they're saying, so, so give us both of them. The spaces are still there. Put the ordinance back for 8 to 6. and. Uh, and then you've got both, and we kind of cut to the chase. Thank you. Now, now we see the light. <laughs> I recall, too, that the uh, medical building had tried to rent spaces at the nearby church and all kinds of other spaces to expand yeah. their parking they, capacity. They, they, they rent, never really met the... Well, they, they, they rented as many spaces as the church will give them because they still do use the church once in a while, so they don't want to give up all their spaces permanently. Um, and all of the, you know, the neighbors, the cooperative bank in the neighborhood has posted their lot for our parking only. I mean, people mark their territory pretty well because parking's at a premium. Um, and while the, while the medical practice has spaces at the church, Middle Street is closer. So it, it really is almost like there's a sign parking on Middle Street because uh, I, I monitor it. It's the same cars in the same spaces every day from 8 to 5 in the afternoon, and reliably. So, it's, and they have a, par, a sign in the medical building parking lot saying additional parking in Middle Street. So it's clearly ancillary parking in the medical building. Um, it's gotten a tad better over the winter, frankly, because Dickinson's program left the building. So there's some vacancies there now. So the building isn't fully occupied. So we've gotten a little breather, but that's not going to be forever because they'll rent the space back and it'll fill back up again. I have a strong feelings about this, but I guess to me it's sort of philosophical. I mean, we want Florence to be vibrant, and there's not a successful commercial area that, I mean, it's hard to be both successful and have empty parking spots. And, and to, I find it totally legitimate when neighborhoods want to make sure that people coming home at lunch have a place to park, there should be some vacancies in the spot. But I have a harder time if it's really two hours, one of the results may be a lot of the spots are sitting, sitting empty. And that's not good for Florence. We should be taking advantage of the spots. So I mean, I'd love to find an in-between where we have five spaces that are two-hour spaces. So that when I come home in the middle of the day, I can have a space to park, but the rest are long-term. Because, I mean, frankly, having a place for businesses to park is a good thing. We want Florence not to be. Has any quantitative study been done? Do, they, do we know how many spots they actually need? Do oh, absolutely. Well, no, we haven't actually pulled the medical building to see what their parking deficiency is in their mind, and I'm very comfortable, I would say, the whole damn street if you ask them, because they pretty much use, use it as far as somebody is willing to walk. Um, all the residents, when we started this, I pulled each resident on Middle Street, and there, there was, the ordinance is written is 600 and something feet from the corner of Chestnut Street, because as you got further down Middle Street, they wouldn't walk that far, so they weren't parking down there. And those residents said, we don't want the restriction down here because we don't have the problem, because the church is closer or somewhere is closer. So it, it doesn't do the whole street. Now, certainly, um, from Chestnut to the first residential properties, 
we could have be longer term parking. And then when you actually hit where the residences begin, because the corner, you know, from from the first real residence on Middle Street, their driveway up to Chestnut, there's a couple of spaces that don't really seem to be an issue because they're not in front of anybody's house. That house faces uh, Chestnut Street or Pine Street, so it is the problem. So if, we'll, if the compromise was, well, don't regulate those spaces, but regulate the spaces and change the, the footage in the ordinance to be from that first driveway down in front of people's houses, that might be a reasonable compromise because then the three or four cars that fit up there could warehouse the car there all day like they do now, but if you went down further, actually in front of where people are living, you couldn't do it. And that might be, since we've been, you know, we're in our like fifth year now of fiddling around with changing this, that might be another change that we could do it and just change the distance in the ordinance so it doesn't cover the couple of spaces closest. And they're the closest to the medical building, so they're, they're, they're primo spaces in the eyes of the medical building because they're close. But all the other parking, this is, is this street is more residential in character. Most of the property is zoned residential, except for the one on the, the one on the corner of Chestnut that goes all the way through to May. All of the truly, you know, business parking in Florence is one or two hour parking. So, all the other streets that the businesses use every day are already restricted to one or two hours, depending on where it is. It's just this one primarily residential street. That is conveniently close that gets parked up like this, and, all, and, and again they're been saying they want they don't want resident only they don't want that they just said turn the spaces over so we get a chance of parking in front of our properties except on Saturday and Sunday. Any other discussion on this? Um, what, what's what's your pleasure? What? <laughs> um, Good question. Sir. Well, it sounds like somebody needs to sponsor a new ordinance or at least amend the ordinance that's out there. And would that be you? Or, or? Well, I sponsored the original one. And, you know, I'll make a deal with you. If you'll support it if I change the distances to leave off the spaces close to Chestnut Street, in between Chestnut and the first residential driveway, let them just stay a free for all whenever they want to park there. And then put this 8 to 6 restriction only from that first driveway down in front of all residential properties, that would be a reasonable compromise for me. And the other end of the street that doesn't want... Them. And they just get left alone, because they that's what they wanted. So we'll just cut off the beginning, you know, it'll start so many more feet from Chestnut Street and exempt those couple of spaces that exist between that first driveway and the corner. Councilor well, Murphy's been at this a long time. I, I can't remember them all. And we're always trying to look for a middle ground. Um, and this has been languishing. I think it's better than anyone. He's probably got the best idea there of what he's proposing. Um, and I'm sure he'd work with you with the drawing it up with the actual footage. But I would have no problem making a motion to have this committee to support the concept, have it designed so it's technically correct. Council Murphy is a co-sponsor. Uh, yeah. I'd have no problem with that. Yeah, so if you support that, I'm happy to just we just gotta measure the distance from Chestnut and change the language at the beginning of it. I second. Is that a motion, Chief? Yes. Does that make any sense, Mary? So it's from the I have to figure out the number, but from that driveway right there. Describe for me what the footage, the temporary solution that was the alternate uh, every two hours for the entire length of the street up to a certain distance uh -huh. is now being proposed to take a shorter distance, allow it to be the regular long term parking. Have a shorter distance for the two hour turnover and discourage the street being a warehouse at uh, daytime for employee cars. That that be implemented, it matches this, the temporary solution for the strike there. We already have the sign posted, so it's a matter of putting this, the signs up. Actually, fewer signs, but if not, yeah, that would be fewer signs. Removing them back, changing the notation of it. That the concept of what Council Murphy described is one that we support as a transportation commission. But every four spaces would be an additional sign. Okay. Yeah, and the and the posts are already there. It just be I think there's only there's only like there's one no parking here to corner 
which does involve this, that's already on the books, how close you can park to a corner. And those spaces are already painted, so they know how close they can get to the corner because they have to be in a space. So I think it's maybe three spaces that would fall out of the restriction, and those three spaces are the closest three to the medical building, therefore the most desirable to them. And then the ones that would remain eight to six get progressively further away, but they're in front of people's houses, and they're the ones that I think most aggravate the residents because they're there all day. So those would be restricted to our eight to six, and we'd free up the ones closest to the medical building and wouldn't restrict them at all so they could still stay there all the time. Okay, and, and it, it, it wouldn't disturb the, the residents' parking needs in front of their homes. No, because realistically speaking, there's still probably going to be people parking there. Most, you know, a lot of the time. Ms. Forsley. As far as enforcement, um, understand that the car has to be marked by the the enforcement officer and then they have to wait two hours and then come back and see if that car is still there. So what that person will do when they become savvy is they will move that car from the spot that they were in one spot forward. So um, you may want to consider how to approach that because that happened before and it's going to happen again. Okay. Are there recommendations? Or standard recommendations that exist for doing that problem? Is it possible to, the ordinance says, no parking in Middle Street for more than two hours, so you can't just move a spot, one spot? Uh, could that be included in this change of uh, uh, ordinance? We, we did have, and we, we did have a scenario the last time where some of these physicians go back and forth to the hospital all day long. So they'll spend a couple hours at the office and they'll go to the hospital for a while. And we did have a problem that, in fact, the opposite was happening. They'd come back to a different space, so they would have been there for an hour and a half, gone away for an hour and a half, come back to a different space to start another two hours, and because they were marked, they got a ticket anyway, even though they were in a totally different space, because the parking person didn't keep track of exactly where they were on the street. So the, the opposite problem seemed to happen. They were they were getting tickets when in fact they moved and come back rather than they just backed up a space to get into a new spot. So I think the, the opposite was more of a problem that they that they were getting ticketed even though they weren't in the same space. Okay. I don't want to perpetuate this, I'm sorry, but the, your, there's an expansion of the Florence Medical Center going on. Will that influence the other end of the street in New York? Um, the, this one is 10 Main Street. The, the other one is up further, and they actually expanded their parking. They bought the, the house on Maple Street and took it down and made it additional parking for themselves. So they, they've done that. The trouble is where this one is, there is no additional space short of, I mean, there's two little houses between them and Pine Street that if, you know, if anything happened to them, if happened to those houses, I'd encourage them to buy them and, and make their lot because... They, they, they've been good about trying to solve the problem. We're just out of space, right, in that little walkable area. So, it's just quick. So is Middle Street parking only on one side now? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you, it, it, it's, it's really just three cars wide. It's, it's, it's a residential street. It's not like Main Street that's wide enough for parking on either side and, and travel. Um, so. And in the winter, it really is only one lane because the snow banks eat up a chunk of the road. So. But I could certainly live with the motion that's on the floor. Okay. Um, so we have that on the floor. Uh, what, what does the amendment actually say? What, how are we changing this? Well, we need the measurement to be able to change it. So I guess your motion would have to be conceptually until that measurement can be taken. Because now, rather than starting, you know, right where the minimum distance is from the corner, it would move down to pass the first driveway. So it would commence further down Middle Street and end in the same place. So we'd have to do the measurement to change the ordinance. Can we just ride it past the first driveway? So it's being, otherwise, how do we, how do we, how do we ride it? If it was a temporary ordinance, you don't have to. We're reading through it. It's just a yeah. 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 so it's a new and I, it's not new. We'll bring it back next month. It's going to take a while 
to get out there and do the measurement and rewrite the language. So we could always bring it back. Kaiser, Kaiser Klein has a question. Uh, she asked. Just, it's my impression that that ordinance expired as of April 1st. Existing ordinance, and I think it's between. I think it's between first and second reading. I, that I don't remember, but it's it that other ordinance, the, the original eight to six ordinance, is still a live ordinance for the city council. It's still there. So my preference would be simply to amend the footages in that ordinance because uh, it's already it's been living in Mary's tracking system for five years now. Before, before it's rectified. Mary, could you explain just where this ordinance is? <coughs> it was first reading. It was amended on February 7, 2013, and then the temporary was done from August to December of 2013. But this one that you have a copy of is what he's talking about is still existing. And this this is not temporary. This, is, this would be permanent. This is the permanent This one. is the permanent one. This one is the one that went around for seven years. So the temporary experiment was never really, never passed. It was, a, yeah, it was its own thing. It was separate. It was separate, it was separate from this. Yeah. Um, it, it, for those of you that recall backward parking, the temporary, the temporary ordinance lived as the same sort of mechanism that was, that was backwards parking, which wasn't a, a permanent ordinance. It was a, up to 120 day test thing. So it lived as one of those creatures rather than the original ordinance. But okay. if I can get together with DPW, we'll bring back the amended version that you are suggesting and show it to you your next monthly meeting, and then we can well, move it forward. Well, we may want to wait then to move forward until that hit. Right. I say, OK. I, I don't object to that because it's no hurry. But we have often, because we don't need to see it again, We've often voted to say and the formal ordinance has to have the detailed numbers. But we sometimes voted to say we all understand what we're trying to do. We're passing this. So we say we support the ordinance that begins that July. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I can't go to city council, but just our fair intent. Mm -hmm. And that means that when Alex sits down and writes the ordinance, it can then be submitted to city council with the correct number without coming back to us. Is that a possibility that council member, you would be okay with? Getting the number, and then a month from now, we would pass. The if you if, if if you really want to see this again, we can, we can do that. It's not like Mr. Five is built up late. with Middle Street. What's say a trade? Whatever the first driver is, go with it and be gone with you. Uh, if we, either way, I'm cool. That, that's fine. I just I just I want to I want to know exactly what the language is. If the language says it's the first driveway with an exact number to no, be the, determined by the, the ordinance, is going to have to have a distance. Right. Yeah. Okay. But we, I don't see us voting on conceptual amendments, right? You are, just because you will get another chance to look at it, or don't you get another chance to look at it? So you know, it yeah, you're going to see this. Even if they don't see it, you're going to see it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what does the amendment say that we're voting on? What? It says we're submitting, we're, we're asking the amendment before council to be amended um, so that no park will be allowed in Mill Street for more than two hours between the point 632 uh, feet and a point some distance to be determined, which is, which coincides with a driveway that mm -hmm. have to be determined. Okay. That's, right. That's fine. Okay. So, all right. So, who made the motion? Here's our fresh my memory. The chief made the motion. Who second? Wayne Pine. Wayne Pine second. Director Pine second. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor. Ready to vote on it? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Staying? Confused? Bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Councilor Fryer. So uh, I'll get together with DPW and we can get that point and, and then amend it at Council. And we won't have to see us again on this one. But we hope to. On a different. Oh, no, I'm happy to come back. I mean, it's been Thank fun. So I just come back on something else rather than this for five years. <laughs> but it's nice to see new faces because there's been new faces. Thank, thank, thank you all. Okay, thank you, All right, very good. Sure. All right, moving swiftly along, um, we have item eight. Um,
which is continuing the discussion of recruitment for our committees, um, as well as this making citizen member of this commission. Um, when we met last time, we discussed this, and it seemed like there's interest in discussing it further. Um, I don't know if anyone has updates to share about committee. Just attend a uh, committee uh, composition or this basement citizen. <laughs> Nobody. Glad I glad just a positive question. Has there been any applications submitted that anybody knows about for this position? Kevin? Uh, there was a Dan Emery in my neighborhood who submitted one of the forms on the internet and he had not heard back. Do you know for which? Was it for one of the committees? I thought it was this one. He said it was. My, my you asked for what I heard, that's all I've heard. My, my latest understanding is that this citizen member, it was, um, who, who filled it last? Leslie Stein. Leslie Stein. Ms. Stein. Was she the PBTA representative? Mm -hmm. Correct. And now Director Fiden is performing that, fulfilling that requirement. Right? Yeah. I'm PBTA, yeah. not the extra slot. No, 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 no. Yeah. You're, you're kind of, okay. Right. So, in any event, it's, it's for the mayor to, Decide if he wants to appoint someone else. Is that correct? Okay. So then what, we'll leave this discussion point at. We'll wait for the mayor to, to take action. Okay. Um, what are our needs in terms of filling empty slots in our committee? We I don't. have um, one person who's currently on the transit or the public transportation committee. So there are three open positions there. I don't remember. It sounds right, but I'm not sure. The parking committee is technically full, but you just said today, Holly, that you would be interested in one or two additional members from the business community, the downtown Northampton business community. We have the minimum number we're required to function as a committee, but there's no maximum number, and we see two more citizen members as being ideal. And then the it also doesn't have a set number, and I think it's fine. We've sort of taken who's ever interested, so it's fine. It, it's more people want to be on, we'd love to have them, but we're fine if no one else comes. We have a pretty healthy, more than quorum meeting every time. Yeah. We usually have eight people around the table. And I know that announcements have been made pretty widely, um, both at city council meetings. Um, we have someone from the parking lot come and make an announcement. Um, I did talk to the mayor's office about kind of featuring it on the website, um, and I was told that that was actually um, a request that had to be kind of carried out, I guess, by Mary Maduro, but she is in the process of leaving her position, so I didn't bother her with that. Do you know anything about that, Mary? I'm sorry, what was it? Just when I spoke to the mayor's office about featuring something on the website about the need for that these committees and commission to be filled in particular, I was told that you would have to um, oversee that as a function of the city council. Okay. Um, so would you want me to put it on the TPC page of the website? Um, we were hoping, I think, for something on the appointments, on the, um, the applications page kind of announcing these as the as committees that needed filling. Okay. Um, typically all applications go to the mayor's office right. and I don't handle any of them until the mayor gives me proposed appointments. But I mean I can put an announcement on the TPC website. Thank you looking for volunteers for certain committees. Right. D just so it's not confusing, the <coughs> this committee open slots are appointed by the mayor, right. the subcommittees are appointed by you all. Okay. So you may not want to go to the mayor's yeah. website because it would sort of be confusing. Okay. So Mary, would that be possible to add an announcement to? Sure. Okay. And I do know just in addition, it sounds like to this person that you know that's applying, there's someone in Word 7 that's in the middle of um, filling out the application for the TPC. So there are going to be two candidates, I think, for this commission. Any other discussion on that? That makes me happy. All right. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mary, for, for doing that. We should have uh, traded a, a member from the Chamber of Commerce.
before we gave him the sign. Join the committee, will give me the permit. Can I ask one more question? Tony, there was also some discussion about trying to pull someone in from the Florence business, the New Civic Association, so there was someone uh, from downtown Florence that, mm -hmm. that would be on the committee. Is that something that you're pursuing? Uh, I believe one of our committee members was going to pursue that. Yeah, she lives in Florence and was going to look there. Okay, all set. Thank you. Um, let's move to item 10, um, which is an ordinance that Again, was left over from last year. Um, Would you like me to explain this? <laughs> <laughs> I just talked to David about it. Well, if it's important to you. That would be very helpful. Thank you. I, I did actually have an email that I um, attached to your packet. Um, you, the TPC saw this on December 17th and took no motion or vote. Um, Councilor Freeman Daniels read it to the commission and nothing was done. And I was told by the ordinance committee uh, that it's it's literally hanging out there again like the Middle Street one. Um, this ordinance has to either be voted, you as a commission needs to vote to send it forward with no recommendation. Um, send it forward a positive recommendation, either way, so that then the ordinance committee can say we're going to send it forward to council, TPC has a negative recommendation, we have a negative recommendation, and so forth. In other words, it can't just lay there and it can't just die. It, something has to be decided in this commission because technically you didn't really get rid of it. You just didn't do anything with it on this, um, December 17th. <coughs> or we could withdraw it. Correct. Um, That's what I was just chatting with the chair of the ordinance committee about. How did we can withdraw somebody else's ordinance? Well, the first large. There's no longer member of the council. It was technically Councilor Freeman Daniels. Yeah. He put forward to the TPC for sponsorship and recommendation. No one, you'll see I have the minutes attached on December 17th. And there was absolutely no recommendation and no discussion and no motion. Okay. Can you start with making a motion? I, I recommend sure. to City Council to either um, defeat it or table indefinitely. Okay. Sure. Just ask a question is that. Is my understanding that someone has to file claims within a certain time frame of an incident? Have we seen any claims filed between these seven days that they're talking about in the ordinance? From 10-31-2013 to 11-6-2013, it's a seven-day period. Did anyone submit a claim to the city for... I, I don't have that information. Well, there's been no claims that have come to right. the claims. But they have, a certain time frame, they have to submit a claim then, correct? 30 days. 30 days. I know what you're saying this is technically irrelevant now, but you have to, as a commission, say. So, I think Mary's right. So, Director Biden has made a motion to essentially make a negative recommendation. Right. And, and council could act on that by either putting right. against this or just table and death. Council is table and death, and I guess we can't. It has to go to ordinance first. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So we have a motion to make a negative recommendation on this ordinance. Is there a second? No, I'll second that. Okay. Mr. Palmer, at seconds. Um, any discussion on negative recommendation? I'm still trying to catch up on what we're talking about and what. <coughs> I'm, I'm, this, trying, I'm trying to find the. Do we have a copy of the. Uh, we do. Uh, Maybe I missed that, sorry. My understanding is this, is, this arose out of the controversy surrounding the the parking garage when there's a seven day period of time, some similar period of time where people could, could have been charged perhaps the wrong amount of money and uh, this is a DPC special take any action on what's just gonna bring the correct on so you want that important we didn't vote. At this point my you know I'm, I I appreciate the spirit with which the ordinance was offered. Um, this point, I feel like. And just to further yeah, explain, no. so on December 17th, the Transportation and Commission took no action, 
but we had already published the agenda for December 19th. December 19th, this was part of the items to carry forward to the 2014-15 Council. The sponsor and no one else said, take this one out. So it literally carried forward, even though no action was taken. Any other discussion on the motion to kick it out with extreme prejudice? No? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So we have given that our seal of disapproval. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mary, very much. Thank you. All right. Um, we have now at number 12 uh, updates from the Department of Public Works. Okay. Uh, the Fidelio received 100 plans for sidewalk on North uh, King Street. 100. 100%? Yes. Ah. So construction hopefully is going to start this year. Um, that's the OT project. Um, also, just uh, for your information, Cons and Pleasant Intersection Roundabout, it's um, in TIF program 2015. So if um, everything's going to go well, we should see construction next year for this roundabout. Uh, reconstruction of Damon Road and Hatfield and North King Street Roundabout, it's in TIF program 2016. Two years from now. What was that? Uh, reconstruction of Damon Road and a roundabout at Hatfield Street and North King Street. Those two projects. Crack ceiling contract. Tomorrow, DPW will start to accept uh, bid proposals for crack ceiling contract and bid opening schedule for April 3rd. Next one. Two weeks from now. And last one, um, I'm pretty sure half of you know that Hinkle Street is postponed to year 2015. Um, and the reason is to improve drainage on Hinkle Street and area adjacent to Hinkle Street. Outfall for drainage has to be designed and constructed before or during the construction of Hinkle Street. And permitting and design can take up to six months. So that's the reason. Great, thank you, Alex. Just ask the question. Does DOT share any information on the Route 5, Route 91 bridge replacement project with you guys? Or you just yes. Yes. Yeah. So we saw the same stuff about the deep Okay. Yeah. It's another project that the bridge replacement over Mount Tom Road. Hotcom, which originally had some pretty dramatic detour plans that would have been crazy through downtown and through East Hampton, so we've been working it. It's only for one that. day. It's only for one uh, one weekends. Yeah, that's what yeah. I finally found out when I got a hold of the project manager. So. Yeah, we made review and comments to this too. I did too. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't know if you were in the loop because I didn't see okay. the plan. Very good. All right. So these are. It's fantastic all these projects are moving forward and we've all been waiting a long time for them. The ones especially around Damon Road, King Street, that's going to have a huge benefit for the many people who live at um, River Run Apartments, for instance, who many of them don't have access to cars. Um, and I'm just, um, just wondering um, uh, what the uh, continuing process for public input is uh, regarding things like the cross, proposed crosswalk over King Street at Damon Road. And, what are, are the, are, what level are the plans at now? They're not at 25% yet, and okay. that's what we're trying to do is get to 25% so we can have that public hearing. Mm -hmm. Great. Which side of, of North King is the DOT sidewalk project going? Both sides or just one side in between? It is on um, the west side of Route 5. The Walmart side, okay. Yeah, side. it's going from uh, Bridge Road to basically Stop and Shop. And right. Be why? Excuse me. And I'm coming, sorry. coming from River Run, uh, uh, we're still planning for crosswalk at, with a head activated uh, uh, crosswalk uh, head signal across King Street. Is that correct? 
We are. However, we need a design exemption for because the VASDOT rules call for sidewalks on both sides. We don't believe that we can design one on the north side of Damon Road with the piers and the abutments for the bridge over Damon Road. So we have to show every attempt to show that we can get crosswalks on both sides, or not crosswalks, sidewalks on both sides, but uh, we have to look at an exemption for it also. So how would, how would residents then get across Ann Street in that case? They would have to get to the light at Industrial Drive for a pet phase there. But if you're coming from River Run to Industrial Drive, would you sidewalk in that section on both sides of the street? On the south side of Damon Road, that's currently where it's proposed to be. We had a meeting with MassDOT two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, where they want us to show a layout for a sidewalk on the north side of Damon Road also. So the sidewalks on both sides. If we didn't do that, let's see. We, from the from the from the pedestrian's perspective, the ideal would be just one crossing at King Street rather than across Damon, then King, then Bridge. That's correct. Okay. So, and you think that would be? Think that's not we, have, we have we have to show the state that why it's impossible or why we don't take um, why we need the exemption for it. Otherwise, you have to show crosswalks on both sides. It's part of their new healthy initiative uh -huh. that they put out about a month ago. And do do you think? There's no chance at all that we'll be able to get those two crosswalks? Crosswalks or sidewalks? Well, sidewalks on both sides is what the state wants to see. Uh -huh. We don't think that we can design one on the north side without some huge costs incurred because of the way the abutments are set up on the 991 bridge. But if that doesn't, if it doesn't happen, there'll be a crossing at River Run with hopefully a pedestrian pace. But in that case, would would Pedestrians not be able to walk along the shoulder without a sidewalk, uh, and still on which side, north or south? North side, uh, walk on the shoulder and, <coughs> and find a crosswalk on the north side of the intersection when they get to the main intersection. Or was there an case be only the south side the crosswalk of Main Street? I couldn't tell you that because that hasn't been designed yet. Okay. Any other discussion? I'm curious about how you um, say thing across a railroad track, you're on a sidewalk that crosses a railroad track. How does that look? Stop, listen, walk? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think that the trains are going to be coming through, what, 50 miles an hour? 40 miles an hour through there is okay. the maximum speed, is my understanding. Yeah. Same thing with crossing the exit ramp. The sidewalk's going to go across that as drivers are coming off the highway looking over their left shoulder. That's exactly. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we, we've talked to we've had actually comments with Wayne on that that there should be some kind of uh, you know advanced pedestrian signs on 91, uh, warning signs, flashing lights, and that's to walk across that ramp and people come down 40 miles an hour. Back is returned. I assume you didn't come back because you're bored. <laughs> you want to join one of our committees? <laughs> I came back to see if Charles and I could meet to talk about Thursday's agenda. Um, 
This was just at your last meeting you wanted, I don't have language for you, your last meeting you wanted to better define what the subcommittees were and what their function was for, for that. And um, I think public transportation, which I've suggested we should actually rename transit, um, it's not defined in the bylaw, there is a description about it in the, uh, uh, the plan itself, um, but it just seems like if we're trying to fill this committee it may be worth Define what this committee's charge really is, um, and I don't really. And so, the discussion from my standpoint, is I don't really know what you want its charge to be. The committee's been very much in the weeds because PDTA has been doing this whole um, switching the, the buses from uh, uh, flag stops to formal stops, um, and so they've been sort of talking about exactly what the stop should be. That work's mostly done. So the question is, what's their role in your standpoint? Is it you know? From my standpoint, it's a big global thing of whether the big pulse point at um, Academy Music is the right place for the main bus stop in town, given the uh, the new train station. And so you can imagine a committee that's very involved with the big picture thing, and there's always little details of operations. Um, and so before we sort of recruit for committee members, it's nice to tell them what you actually want them to do. And, and there are small things, for example, you know, when Ms. Ma was here, she was describing how fast she, she, they strive for turnaround. I mean, that's one thing we can put in there, that when something is referred to a committee, it's referred back within 30 or 60 days, and operational details like that. Okay, can I have one of that parking issue? Because we, we lost two members of the parking commission about sort of what's the level of scale. Like, Middle Street's a good example. I, I, there was one person who left right after they were like 20 people, I'm exaggerating. Five people from Middle Street showed up and their agenda for one entire night was just talking about Middle Street. And so one of the downtown business members actually stepped down from the committee right after that because she was involved with wanting to go its own reform and big picture things. And so it's the same thing of is that committee's job to deal with those detailed you know, referrals or is it to deal with strategic thinking? And again, it's back to you all. How do you see those committees being most helpful? Someone, someone may know this, but um, procedurally, where are the, where do these bylaws exist? I mean, they're not in ordinance, are they? No, it's the resolution of this committee. We just we, we just create them and sort of. I'm sorry, sorry. Parking is actually unique. Parking is in the bylaws of city council because it used to be a parking commission, right. and that went away, and this committee replaced it. So the ordinance creating you all specifically talks about parking. The other subcommittees are not there. All right, well, unless someone has a specific action to recommend today, I mean. Well, I wonder if some kind of ad hoc um, subcommittee of this group could look at creating those, or if the committees themselves would want to create something that they bring to us as recommendations. I think either of those directional approaches could work. Committee of committees. Um, do, do we have enough members on each committee to actually meet and two of the three? Two of the three, okay. Well, we could ask two of the three to do what Councilor Klein suggests. You actually have two of the parking committee, though. Those were formed last year. Yes. It's the other two, though. It's transit or public transportation, and I bet don't have them. I wonder if the transit committee needs to be more of a have an ad hoc kind of model. So that maybe there could be a standing, um, you know, member of this committee to oversee it, this commission to oversee it. But then, um, as particular issues come up, it's formulated with people that are concerned with that particular mm -hmm. issue. If that might be a different model that would work better for that. I think that could be great. I think sometimes committees just sort of meet because they have to meet without having. I mean, the, the problem, I think, with it would be that if you create an ad hoc committee, you necessarily are bringing people to the floor that don't have a, mess, a, a, a level of objective. Right. Um, objectivity. So that, that could be its downside, I think. Okay. Any other discussion on this? So are we making a request to these committees? Start drafting bylaws. 
Okay. How is the Public Transit Committee going to do that? Since it's not staffed or, or, or meeting. So I, I did email Jim Nash, who's on the left. He emailed Leslie Stein, the former chair, and sent back something that basically the excerpt from the existing, as Mary said, the existing bylaws. So it's maybe the least important of, uh, from the, yeah, the existing, whatever it's committee to say. So it is something at least, but it doesn't really answer at least the question I have of how the weeds are they and how big policy. Well, if we want to take the ad hoc approach, I'm wondering if that means that two or three people from this commission could put something together that identifies this as an ad hoc, or the possibility of ad hoc committee coming together with particular issues, if we want to go in that direction. Um, well, so someone should make a motion to do something. One, one motion that we could um, simply make is that I or another representative reach out to those committees who exist substantially enough and just request that they begin work on bylaws that within, say, 30 days um, present drafts to us. And then rather than an ad hoc committee, we as full commission perhaps could discuss them at that time. So, so really we're only talking about the bike committee because we don't have a transit committee at this point that can do that. And might still be worth, so, uh, even though parking has something, might still be worth them re-examining yeah. it. Anyway, I mean, yes, they're further along, but they still want to think about that. Okay. Is that, is that motion clear? Does someone want to move that? Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Lowenthal moves the motion. Is there a second? Second. Director Five and seconds. And all in favor? Uh, Opposed? Same. I think that's a I think that's a good start. Um, we'll have something to look at in the future. Um, so thank you. Um, item 15. Um, this is a uh, item Director Biden added proposed ordinance to drop two southerly parking space on State Street, which will allow a right turn onto Main and Elm Street. So the background on this is most of you saw the proposal for Nelson. That is, I'm one shy on the side of this So two of you can share. Um, most of you saw the proposal for Nelson Nygaard, sort of conceptual reworking of Maine, New South, State, and Elm. Um, and that's what this is. Um, and the discussion we had at the time is, what's the low-hanging fruit? Regardless of how the design goes forward, and obviously the design will evolve, what are the things which we know the intersection needs? And one of the things that came out, which seems like the easiest low-hanging fruit, is State Street. <coughs> People turn right onto Route 9, often can't turn right because the cars are queued up too much for cars starting to go straight through. And so they wait a frustrating a long time for that intersection to clear. Or sometimes my favorite illegal thing is they cut into the church parking lot and go around and then enter right. So we just talked about it just makes sense to drop a couple of parking spots on State Street. It'll make sense in any case. Alex drafted that, so I'm not sure. These two spaces that from one? Yes, two spaces. Um, so the actual language you see is, is done by Alex. So it would just it would let us move forward and drop in these two spaces. Uh, it's actually it's the westerly side, not southward. Okay. Southbound, southbound, but westerly side. Yes. Okay. And, and just I mean, this is very sensitive. The nationwide figure for the value of a parking spot in front of a business is that each each spot can be worth about hundred thousand dollars in business than joining the store. Obviously a lot more in big cities, a lot less in small cities. My guess is we're somewhere, you know, half of that in Northampton. But on street spaces are really valuable and far more valuable than off street spaces. So I'm always very cautious about this, but I think this is a place where from a transportation standpoint it's really important. The church doesn't need the spaces. The futon place across the street has their own off street spaces. So I'm less sensitive to this than I would be in most places. Um, there's often uh, a, a, the intersection is not clearing, and so uh, I'd like to just suggest that we keep an eye on whether this is going to add to that problem any more or less. I mean, the, the coming from South Street crossing and going up Elm often <coughs> it blocks the intersection, um, and so by allowing State Street to enter that stream, also that could exacerbate it. So I just say, ask to keep an eye on. 
One thing that I know the parking committee, there are now two folks on the parking committee, and I wish um, Holly Mott were still here who chairs that committee. Uh, two people on that committee are motorcycle folks, and they come to that committee especially because they want to advocate for things related to motorcycle parking. And I'm wondering if there's any way those two spaces could be reassigned as motorcycles only because they can be much uh, narrower, or I don't know if that's the right term, but so that you know cars could still get around and that could address that issue that's come up a number of times in other, other similar kinds of situations. So you don't lose the spots completely, but they're uh, motorcycle specific. Would that still, as far as you know, allow establishing a right turn lane? No. 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 So the, the, the fact that they would just be kind of narrower spots wouldn't create enough space for that, you're sure? It's pretty I'm pretty sure if you ask the motorcyclists if that's the spot that they prefer to park and they'd say no. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> the likely of getting their motorcycles knocked over is pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. Let, let the record show that the As a motorcyclist, I would never park my bike there. Yeah. Besides, you don't pull in this way. You back pull in, in and then back your bike in so that you are still sticking out towards the roadway. And as our ordinances state now, you can park more than one bike per parking spot. So I really <coughs> just don't. I, I know nothing about this. I just know that it's come up a number of times with these motorcycle folks, and they keep proposing that for these ends of streets where we want to eliminate parking spaces. So I thought maybe this was one of those times that it sounds like. You know. Just for the for the commission's reference, too, I often say don't mess with Chief Sinkowitz, you know, but we shouldn't mess with uh, Nancy. Either. She's a she's a parker. and she can dispense parking. No, it's, this is why I'm overdue. I mean, we have people complain about near misses in that parking lot um, because people can't make the right. They queue up past Center Street on State, so you can't get out of Center. And it just this is going to queue everything up, up, up a lot more. The only thing is, we, we might want to consider referring it to the parking committee. I'm not saying we should. I'm just I'm asking. Yeah. It goes back to the, the definition. I mean, as a parking committee member who's frustrated that we haven't had a chance to deal with the reform package. That's the reason I like them not looking, because I want them to keep focus on the big picture. But you're right, I just, I'm not sure what their charge is enough to know whether we want them in the lead search for the big picture. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think Wayne's gotten this, I mean, we, we've had a traffic engineer look at this, and so I, I don't know that it's, but the work on what done has already been done. Yeah. I think they have their mandate now, too. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Wayne, but I don't think that people on the parking committee were very happy to be doing this kind of big picture examination right now. I don't think they necessarily feel that they need to, you know, do a case by case basis or decision making. Do so. we have a motion on the floor? Uh, Four. Do you have an offer again? Yeah. What motion do you offer? We proposed the deletion of the two parking spaces on the west side of There's Safe no Street. There's no motion on the floor. So I'm going to do it. Makes a motion. Spruce seconds. All in favor. Uh, any discussion? Further discussion? Hope not. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, thank you. Any new business? Before we go, um, uh, I believe this is um, Mary Medora's last time staffing this commission. Wow. Is that correct? Don't know. <laughs> 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 I would like it to be. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, her departure is will be devastating, I think. Um, and although I, this is my second meeting, I can just say from being in the city council, uh, you know, for not that long either, uh, how, in, in a way that's even it, even easier for me to, to see because I've been on this a short amount of time, how much Mary does. Um, and we're very thankful for all the work you've done in the parking committee. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> Thank you. Can I make a suggestion? Okay. For the new clerk, if 
DPW updates could be in writing, that would be extremely helpful because I don't live here and I have struggled for years to understand what streets you're talking about when you're talking about streets. You, when you have maps or when you have it printed out, that is so much more helpful to attach that to the minutes than to get it wrong. And the other thing is, as I asked you, if you can say this person made the motion, that person made the second, that's also extremely helpful because the new clerk may not know the people who are the characters and or who's an audience or what. It's, that's really helpful just to identify people. Excellent suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll you come, come back and visit. It's the police department's game. Because mm -hmm. uh, yes, I know. <laughs> so, okay, well, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Okay. Thank you very much.